What's up guys, Cal here, and today I'm going to be doing a long-term review on my personal bike. And that personal bike is the Transition Sentinel. A little bit about the Transition Sentinel. It's Transition's kind of first try of a long travel 29er. They also have the Smuggler, which is their shorter travel 29er. Uh, but this is their kind of, you know, more aggressive, all-mountain enduro 29 bike. I have the aluminum GX build. Um, at the time when I ordered mine, they were out of carbon models. Um, I didn't really see the need to go up to an X01. Um, build kit there you know this GX build kit is awesome I really like it and I've been pretty happy with having the aluminum you know I haven't really been noticing that it's not carbon too much um, but first thing here we have with the bike is it's 140 millimeters of travel in the back with a 160 fork up front um, it also features transitions new it also features transitions new SBG geometry and what that stands for is speed balance geometry and what that means here is we have a really steep seat tube angle and a little bit slacker head tube angle from other bikes kind of you know in this more aggressive all mountain category so it's going to be a 64 degree head tube angle which you know isn't too radical there's some bikes kind of getting close to that or catching up to it but you know just a few years ago that was full blown downhill bike geometry for the head tube there and the way they get away with doing this is they start using reduced offset forks so it brings that fork in a little bit closer to the bike there so you're getting all the benefits of that really slack 64 degree head tube angle um, but you know it's not going to be super unmanageable and it's still agile enough on you know slow speed technical descending um, or even you know climbing stuff like that. Just to go over a few things of the build kit on this bike, I think it's a very good value compared to some other bikes right around this price point. Start off with for suspension here, we have the new Fox DPX2 rear shock. I really like this shock, I've been really happy with it. Um, this is the Performance Elite model so it does have that little bit of low speed compression adjustment along with that three position switch. Um, rebound 2, been super happy with it, 20 mount metric shock on these new bikes here. Um, can't complain, I really like the shock a lot, a lot of good adjustment, um, it just performs really well, haven't had any problems. Fork is the Rock Shocks Lyric, it does have the Charger 2 in it, but this one was before the Debonair so it doesn't have that new Debonair spring, um, it was also before the new you know, that new higher end Lyric, uh, I think it's the R RC2 dampener, before that came out. But with the Charger 2 and the Lyric, really happy with, you know, the Lyric's really stiff chassis. Um, Charger 2 is even better than the Charger 1. I was a huge fan of the Charger 1, but I've really been liking that fork. Next up here is the 12 speed Eagle group set here, which is on this bike. Um, this is my first bike with 12 speed or with any kind of Eagle on it. Um, I've really been liking it, you know. The G, even the GX stuff here, super crisp shifting, um, really reliable, pretty tough too. You know, I haven't really had any trouble with it. Just you know, keeping it clean and keeping it lubed up. Um, you know, showing a little bit of wear on the cassette, as with some of these, you know, the black SRAM cassettes from years past too. They do um, start to wear and get a little bit discolored, but um, really great. You know, crisp shifting and everything. It does have the SRAM descendant cranks on here also been really happy with those um, you know they seem reasonably stiff not too terribly heavy um, you know for as far you know, for what I need them for they're fine um, one thing that is very cool with this new Eagle stuff is the new Eagle specific chain rings and what that is is the teeth profile is a little different than any nar other narrow wide chain set so it really does hold it um, I think a little bit better for, you know for me totally eliminates the need for any kind of chain guide or anything like that. The, another cool thing on this bike compared to some other bikes, you know, in this travel range, also in this price point, this bike retails for four thousand. Um, I think this year it did jump up a little bit due to some spec uh, spec differences. I think they went to Fox suspension things like that for this exact build. Um, but I think it's forty two hundred, so relatively the same. But for kind of this um, mid tier price range, is the brakes. It does come with the SRAM code brakes, so it's they're bigger you know, beefed up, all mountain, really downhill oriented, um, you know, four piston brakes. I really like them. I think I like them a little better than the guides I had on my last bike. You know, the guides were awesome, but you know, these stopping power wise feel about the same, but you know, just cause bigger brake, you know, there's just more fluid in the system. They feel a little more consistent. Um, just the overall feel feels like a little bit more modulation too. I, I really like them. As far as the wheel build on this bike also is something that I really like and think was a nice touch um, by Transition. It is the E13 TRS rim mounted on Novatech hubs. 
Um, you know, Novatex, they've been around for a while. They make a lot of hubs for a lot of other companies and they just get rebranded. Um, they you know, definitely known in the road world for making some pretty good hubs. Um, but this wheel set has been awesome. It's been really strong. Um, the E13 wheels are really easy to set up tube with. They come pre-taped. All you need to do is get a tube with valve and they're very easy to set up tube with. Um, they've been really strong. You know, no dents. A few little scratches, like uh, just on the rim from getting hit by a rock or something. But you know, no dents. They're still perfectly in true. I've never trued them in now the six months I've had the bike. Um, you know, the the cones haven't been coming loose on the hubs or anything like that. They've been really, you know, haven't given me any trouble, and they've put up with a lot and performed really well. So I've been very happy with those. Another cool thing here is the RockShox Reverb. And, you know, the reverb is a really common dropper post, probably one of the most common out there. Um, this one doesn't have the new one by remote. That changed again for this new model year. But the old style remote works just fine. But what's cool about transition here is they spec a 170 mil dropper post, which is really nice because, um, especially if for, you know, anyone basically over six feet tall, that 170 or up, you know, those longer travel ones makes a lot of sense because... You can still get a good seated climbing position, but then, you know, you still have all that travel of the seat post to get the seat really down low and out of the way for descending. So I think that was a really nice touch and something that I really enjoyed on this bike. One thing I would possibly change, I haven't felt a need to change it yet, um, hasn't been a huge issue, is the tire combination. It is a Maxxis Mini and DHF in the front and a DHR2 in the back. They're 2.3s. Um, uh, which, you know, it'd be nice to see a 2.4 or a 2.5 or possibly the new wide trail casings on there, which they do have, again, for this new model year. I love DHFs. Uh, I think they're awesome, you know. They roll pretty fast. They have awesome braking traction, really good side traction, too. Can't complain with that. I really, really like those tires. Um, my one complaint here is down in Grand Junction like I am right now. There's a lot of, it's a lot rockier, sandier, a little bit looser. Um, the DHR2 down here... For descending, you know, braking and turning, traction is fine. Climbing traction on rock um, isn't the best. It tends to slip a lot more than some other tires that I've had in the past. You know, just it just can't, it just doesn't have as much grip. Um, whether that's on the you know compound or the tread design or whatever, um, they just don't quite perform as well. But you know, up in dirt, some you know other areas where there's not as rocky. It's been awesome, you know, it rolls really fast climbing, has really good braking traction, so, you know, on, on rocky terrain, it's not the best for climbing, you know, it slips a few times, but it's not too bad. Overall, I really like this bike. This bike was my first 29er bike. Um, I really like the big wheels, especially on this bike. The SBG geometry here, I think, works really well with these big wheels. Um, you know, definitely, it's a very aggressive bike in downhill, and the faster you go, the more the bike really does come alive. Um, you know, at slow speeds on flatter terrain or something, it's not the most lively bike just because, you know, the big wheels, pretty slack, and it is a pretty long bike as well. Not the best. You know, it's still fun, and it's just still fast. It's just not super poppy or lively. You know, you really, really got to be on a faster, kind of steeper, rougher trail to really get everything out of this bike, and that's kind of, you know, what it was made for. One thing that has surprised me with this bike is it does jump pretty well. Uh, you know, I was kind of skeptical with for, you know, as long of a bike, as slack of a bike, and the big wheels, I, I didn't really know how it was going to jump. But it does jump really well. Uh, it feels really stable in the air, very predictable and everything like that. This is my long-term review on my uh, 2018 Transition Sentinel. It's an awesome bike. I really do love it. You know, it's, it's been great. <laughs> Pro, you know, definitely gets into that do-it-all kind of quiver killer type of bike. But um, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.